Welcome, everybody. Great to have you here on day one of the five-day alcohol-free challenge. My name is James Swanick. Some of you, or maybe most of you already know who I am. Some of you have got no idea and you're scratching your head going, why am I listening to this funny talker? I'm from Brisbane, Australia, uh, but I am a Australian US citizen. So I'm a dual citizen. Uh, let me just share my screen. I'm going to go over what we're going to be talking about today. You get to enjoy seeing my entire desktop here. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, just for those of you who don't know me, I am the founder and CEO of Alcohol Free Lifestyle and the company Swanick Sleep. I'm a speaker, coach, uh, an investor, and I'm an advisor to businesses, entrepreneurs, and top professionals. I help high performers to get long-term power over alcohol. And I do that mostly through my flagship program experience, which is called Project 90. Uh, and just to give you a little bit of context, Project 90 has an 87% success rate of clients getting to at least 90 consecutive days alcohol-free on their first attempt. So 87% success rate. 99% success rate of clients getting to at least 90 consecutive days alcohol-free on no more than three attempts. And then of those folks who get through their 90 consecutive days are the ones who stayed in, in contact with us. Most of our former clients report that they are still alcohol-free years later, or they drink modestly or on rare, rare occasions. Alcohol no longer has power over them. Uh, so those success rates are pretty, I mean, I'll say this humbly, I guess. I think they're the best success rates on the planet. I mean, I don't know of any other place where you can get power over your drinking that has a success rate like that. AA, by comparison, comparison has less than a 10% reported success rate. This is an article in The Atlantic. And you can see here, peer-reviewed studies peg the success rate of AA somewhere between 5 and 10%, which is not that great. So my method has been proven to work repeatedly over many years, and I'm going to give you this method for free over the next five days. Uh, it's great to have you here. Uh, maybe you're here because you want to get long-term power over alcohol. You want to reduce the, the frequency of your drinking. Maybe you want to quit entirely. Maybe you want to do moderation. Whatever your intention is, what you're going to learn over the next five days is going to help you. Okay, that's my promise to you. Let me just share my screen again here. So here's the schedule. Today, we're going to be rewiring your brain and setting you up for success. You are here to be alcohol-free for the next five days, so I am going to show you how to do that. And today, we're going to rewire your brain and we're going to manipulate your environment, your home probably, and set you up for success. Tomorrow, day two, also at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, I'm going to show you how to socialize alcohol-free. A lot of people are worried that if they quit drinking, reduce drinking, they'll lose their friends. They won't be able to network. People will think that they're an alcoholic, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to show you how to socialize alcohol-free and have an amazing time doing it. Day three, Thursday, we're going to be talking about the truth about alcohol and its cost. You may think that you're only spending three or $4,000 a year on alcohol, but the real cost to you could be hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yes, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Including, by the way, if you're not just an entrepreneur or you're a high performer, even if you have a modestly um, paid job, your drinking habits are costing you hundreds of thousands of dollars every single year. I'm going to show you how. If you're a business owner or an entrepreneur, I can say unequivocally that your drinking habits, if you've identified that they're holding you back, are costing you possibly millions of dollars in revenue. I'm going to show you. If you're a skeptic right now, you won't be. Let me just share my screen again. On Friday, I'm going to be showing you how to reduce or eliminate cravings. Have you ever said to yourself, I'm going to quit drinking, I'm not going to drink anymore, and then the craving comes and it just becomes all too challenging and then you reach for the drink anyway. So on day four on Friday, I'm going to show you how to reduce those cravings or how to eliminate them entirely. Again, you may be a skeptic. That's okay. Skeptics are welcome here. You won't be a skeptic soon though. 
And then on Saturday, starting at 10 a.m. Pacific, that's 1 p.m. Eastern, I'm going to wrap it all up, put it all together, give you the magic formula for lifetime power over alcohol. And lifetime power over alcohol can mean quitting forever, or it can mean quitting for a long time and then possibly having a drink on occasion. It could mean moderation. But you will have power over alcohol. You will be free to choose versus you need alcohol versus you need it to reduce your stress or you need it to relax. That will no longer be a thing. I'm going to reveal the magic formula for lifetime power over alcohol. Common questions I get. Uh, I've been coaching people now since 2015. I've coached more than 20,000 people. In terms of Project 90, I've coached hundreds of high performers, business owners, entrepreneurs, executives, uh, husbands and wives, parents. Why can't I quit on my own? I've tried so hard. Why can't I do this? It's, It's a very common question. We'll get to that. Why does willpower not work? We're going to get that. You may have asked yourself at some stage, am I an alcoholic? Well, I have good news. Chances are you're not. Even if you've been asking yourself that question, you're not. 99% chance you're not, and I'm going to show you why. What do I even do if I'm not drinking? How am I going to have fun? My whole identity is going to change. What the heck am I going to do with all of my time? We'll get to that. Is there something wrong with me because I can't stop? No, there isn't. I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you why you can't stop, and I'm going to show you easily how to correct that. Will my friends leave me if I stop drinking? How do I network if I don't drink? How much is drinking actually costing me? What should I drink instead? I'm going to be showing you on this very call what to drink instead. How do I eliminate cravings? How do I reduce stress without alcohol? Because stress is a big cause of our cravings. So uh, maybe you're here because you want to feel healthy and you want to improve your looks. Maybe you want to get rid of the poison out of your skin. Maybe you want to lose some weight. You want to feel great. And you're wanting to get power over alcohol. And some of you might be asking, who is this guy anyway? And why is he qualified to be teaching me this stuff? So I'll just give you a very, very quick overview. And then we'll get into the nitty gritty because I know you're here for the nitty gritty. Uh, Before I do that, let me just check. I had a couple of questions here from people, which is fantastic. Um, Is this a Facebook-based program? I don't use Facebook that much. Uh, It can be, but no, you don't need it. You don't need Facebook. Uh, Thank you for your question. Um, and if you have a question, just a reminder, you can go ahead and just click on the Q and A. It says there's a Q and A button there. Type in your question, and as we go along, I will uh, I will get to that. Okay, let's continue on here. So, quick overview on me, and then we'll get into the nitty gritty. Who am I? Well, this is me when I was a drinker. I don't think I look that great in that photo. And then here's a recent photo of me. You can really see the difference, kind of like a before and after. You can see here I've got the double chin. My skin's not great, I'm overweight, and I was just feeling blah. In 2010, I unearthed a simple method for quitting alcohol, and on March 13th, 2010, I stopped. Haven't touched a drop of alcohol since. In fact, on March 12th, which was the night before, I was at a party not too dissimilar to this. This is South by Southwest in Austin, Texas. I had two Bombay Sapphire gin and tonics, I went back to my hotel, went to sleep, woke up in the morning, looked in the mirror and just like, ugh, I don't feel great. I didn't necessarily have a huge hangover, but I just looked in the mirror and thought to myself, you're just average, James. You're performing at a six out of 10. You're foggy. You're distracted. You're not sleeping great. It wasn't like I was rock bottom, but I was just, just blah. And the hotel I was staying in was right next to an IHOP. And I went into this very IHOP and I sat in the table in this very window here. You can see my mouse. And I looked out the window and I thought, what am I doing in an IHOP? And I said to myself, you know what? I'm just going to quit drinking for 30 days and see what happens. I'm going to commit to this so I can clear up this fogginess and irritability and this general feeling of lethargy. And in 30 days of not drinking... I lost 13 pounds, which is pretty amazing. I went from this to this. 
lost 13 pounds just by not drinking. It wasn't that I ate any particularly better. I just stopped drinking the calories and the poison and all of that kind of stuff. And I started feeling great. Three months after that, I landed my dream job. I became a sports center anchor on ESPN. Some of you have um, told me that you remember seeing me on that show. I was there 2010 through 2012. It was a dream job for me, and I get to I got to meet and hang out with people like Magic Johnson. I had him on the show a couple of times. I got to interview him, which was amazing. And I had this clarity and this focus and this energy from being alcohol-free. Excuse me while I have some sparkling water. And... Uh, you know, because I was clear, because I had energy, because I was sleeping well, I was focused. So I credit being alcohol free to helping me get that job at Sports Center because I was clear in mind, I was energetic, I focused. Quite frankly, I just performed at a very high level. Let me just close this. There we go. Uh, soon after, I started a e-commerce business. I produce blue light blocking glasses. These things are called Swannies. This is my sleep company, Swanic Sleep. You can check it out if you're interested, swanicsleep.com. Uh, we generated a million dollars in revenue in the first year, which was pretty exciting. So exciting, in fact, that Entrepreneur Magazine wrote an article about me and my brother who did this. I started the company with my brother. How I built a million dollar business in 12 months. Again, I credit being alcohol free to giving me the focus and the energy to enjoy success, not just in business, but in health and relationships. We'll get that to that in a second. Forbes magazine named me one of the top 25 professional network experts back in 2015. Um, I became acquaintances. It would be an exaggeration for me to say that I'm friends with, but I became acquaintances with folks like Elon Musk. You may have seen him on Saturday Night Live the other night, um, billionaire owner of Tesla and PayPal and SpaceX, Mark Cuban from Shark Tank. I spoke on stages. Um, I gave to Arnold Schwarzenegger's charity and got to spend, got to go to his annual fundraising event each year, which was really exciting. Even got to work out with him once at uh, Gold's Gym in Venice Beach, California. That was a real thrill. Uh, and then as I started to coach high performers on how to quit drinking, I ended up coaching a two-time Oscar winner on how to get power over alcohol. I'm not allowed to reveal who that person is, but you will know them. Uh, Hugh Hefner from the Playboy Mansion before he died, I consulted to him about how to reduce or quit alcohol. Eli Manning, uh, New York Giants, two-time Super Bowl winner. If you're an Australian, you'll, you may know um, Jack Bongiorno, who is uh, one of Australia's top real estate moguls, and also he's the owner of a, a Melbourne Cup uh, winning horse. Melbourne Cup is, the, is Australia's biggest race day. America had the Kentucky Derby or the Kentucky Derby, I should say, just last week. Uh, if you've been following that, the head trainer is um, under suspicion of doping the horse, but and that's another story. But Jack Bongiorno, I helped to get long-term power over drinking, and he credits much of his re uh, real estate success to having clarity and focus from being alcohol-free. You may have seen me speak on stages around the world in New York and London, uh, Sydney, Australia. I've been on the Doctors TV show a couple of times, Yahoo. Um, Dave Asprey had me on his podcast, number one health podcast, one of the top health podcasts in the world. The uh, podcast episode was Be Wiser Without Budweiser, which I thought was pretty clever. Clever Psychology Today has featured the method I'm about to reveal to you um, in, its, uh, in its magazine. Uh, a few other big blogs, Elephant Journal. Um, so that's a bit about me. I know you want to get into the nitty gritty, but I can say that a life without alcohol is far better than the life I had with alcohol. Um, all these photos that are coming now are photos of me since I've been alcohol free. This is me living in my New York City uh, um, apartment building. Uh, travel, of course, before COVID, went to Rome. That's Burning Man, the Roman baths in Bath in the UK. This is Scottsdale, Arizona. This is up in Hollywood Hills in Los Angeles. I like to be active. Um, and all of these active photos I'm showing you just to demonstrate what is possible for you when you're consistently alcohol-free. Um, today I'm an investor. One of the other things I do, I invest in... Um, Brand. So I'm a part owner in Pier One Imports. You may have bought some home goods there. Um, Radio Shack, 
uh, Dress Barn, Steinmart, Modell Sporting Goods, Linens and Things, Mentor Box, Farmer's Cart, uh, Knowledge Society. Uh, I am an investor and part owner in many of these businesses, and I used to not have any clue about um, business until I went alcohol-free. And when I became alcohol-free, uh, alcohol that really kick-started my um, entrepreneurial and investor life because now I was free to do whatever it was that I was interested in. Um, and if you're here because you're wanting to get more clarity and focus, you're in the right spot because being alcohol-free is going to help you produce that. All right, so a uh, couple famous people who don't drink you may not be aware of. Let me just uh, give you the inspirational talk, so to speak, uh, because there is a, a tide um, happening of people who don't drink. Warren Buffett, world's most successful investor, doesn't drink. Jennifer Lopez, alcohol-free. Um, Larry Ellison, very successful businessman, alcohol-free. Oscar-winning actress Natalie Portman, uh, alcohol-free. Whether you like him or loathe him, Donald Trump and Joe Biden are both alcohol-free. I don't care about your politics, just something that's interesting to note. Uh, Shana Twain, alcohol-free. Tyra Banks, alcohol-free. Ronaldo, the soccer star, alcohol-free. Kristen Davis, alcohol-free. Now, maybe you don't care about Hollywood celebrities or you don't care about President Biden or President Trump. That's fine. It's just interesting that there is a big movement at the moment where people are choosing to be alcohol-free because of the incredible benefits that you get from that. Uh, if you're just joining, welcome. We've got some new people here and we've got a couple of questions. If you're just joining, go ahead and just type in where you are joining from, which city, which state, which country. Uh, let's go back to the truth. Here is the truth. The truth is, is that you've been lied to because all of the marketing and all of society tells us that if you drink alcohol, it's fun and cool and you can be this guy with the two attractive ladies on his arm or you can be these ladies with the attractive man on his arm. If you meet up with the, with the ladies, you can just have riotous fun because alcohol is present. And there are smiling assassins all over the world who smile at you as they offer you drinks. It's the waitress or the waiter who says, good evening, sir. Good evening, ma'am. May I get you started with some drinks? It's the waiter who says, ma'am, sir, welcome. May I get you started with some drinks? Would you like wine, cocktails? It's the friends who invite you to the bar. And of course, they're all smiling and happy and laughing. Hey, oh, can I get you a drink? And of course, it's all false marketing. Marketing shows photos of a couple enjoying a glass of wine. This woman's looking at this man seductively. These guys are hanging out at the bar, having a good time, holding on to their Bud Light. Look at them smiling and laughing and having a great time. People are cheering. cheering. Oh, yes, wonderful. Leonardo DiCaprio is drinking champagne and there's fireworks going off in the background. He's very sophisticated with his tuxedo. So, of course, we associate champagne with celebration. Well, who created that idea? A very clever marketer. Because all this champagne is and all this beer is and all this beer and all this wine is is just attractively packaged poison. Jay-Z, in the club, let's pop a beautifully packaged bottle of poison and then everyone will associate that with excitement and celebration and so everyone will want to drink this attractively packaged poison just like these guys. The truth is that alcohol is a poison and toxic to the body. It takes seven to 10 days in most cases for the body to rid itself of all the toxins. So that means that if you have a drink right now, if you have a sip, let's imagine this is a, a beer, for example, the toxins from that beer are now going to show up in your body a week, a week and a half from now. They can take a strand of someone's hair. They will not be able to take it from my head. But if you have hair, they'll be able to take a strand of your hair, put it under a microscope a week later, and they'll be able to see the toxins from the alcohol that you consumed. That's how long the alcohol hangs around in your system. That's how long it's in there just eating away at you. So it takes seven to 10 days in most cases for the body to rid itself of the toxin. Alcohol raises the risk of breast cancer in women. It lowers the testosterone levels in men. 
It can cause sexual dysfunction. It kills your brain cells, restricts your brain growth, leads to a leaky gut, causes you to gain weight. Oh, what fun we'll have. Alcohol gives you a fatty liver, underperforming kidneys and high blood pressure. I can't tell you how many people go through my Project 90 experience and their blood pressure drops from high to low over the course of 90 days. It's incredible. I had one client, Roseanne. She's a 60-something retiree from Arizona. Is it Yukon or Yuzen, Arizona, I think it is? Her heart, blood pressure when she joined us was, was incredibly high. Her resting heart rate was high. And then at the end of the 90 days, her blood pressure had dropped to here and her resting heart rate had dropped to here. She lost 24 pounds, I think it was. Maybe it was 21 pounds, one of those odd numbers, even though 24 is an even number. <laughs> anyway, somewhere in the 20s she lost as a result of not consuming alcohol, uh, attractively packaged poison, I should say. Uh, let's keep going here. Uh, one pint of beer is the same same calories and, and poor nutrition, I guess, as a slice of pepperoni pizza. A ring donut uh, or, or an ice cream, same calories as a large glass of white wine. Who here enjoys a glass of white wine? Gin and tonic, same as a can. Uh, Candy bar, glass of champagne, same as a packet of chips or crisps. Uh, Pinot Grigio, same as a chocolate donut. So every time you're enjoying that wine or that drink, imagine eating a chocolate ring donut. Uh, we know it affects our sleep. Now, it's true that it may help you fall asleep, but the quality of your sleep is going to be severely compromised. And when your sleep is compromised and you've got toxins rolling around in your skin, then the aging process speeds up faster than what nature wants it to go at. There's a natural aging process. But what you're doing when you drink alcohol is you're speeding that up. You're like, oh, I don't like nature's plan for me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go faster. I'm going to age faster. And that shows up with wrinkles skin issues. They did a study out of, uh, out of the UK that showed that um, uh, drinkers, regular drinkers, not even alcoholics, but just societally acceptable drinkers have about a 30% more visible crow's feet and wrinkles on their face than non-drinkers. So look at my skin. I haven't drunk since 2010. You know, I'm a 45-year-old, soon to be 46-year-old man. I have what nature has given me. I've got some wrinkles. I've got some crow's feet, but I don't have bags under my eyes. I don't have a sunken face. I think I look the way that nature just intended me to look. I don't think I look any better than anyone else. I just look the way that nature intended me to look because I drink lots of water. I eat well, I exercise, I get some sun, I practice gratitude. And I just think I look the way I'm supposed to look. A drinker a societally acceptable drinker, which may be you, will likely not look like the way that nature intended that person to look. Nature wants you to look a certain way. But when you're drinking, you will likely have 30% more visible signs of wrinkles, crow's feet, dry skin. You might have a little bit of extra puffiness around your, your neck, or around your, your, uh, your chin. Your eyes might be sunken. If you're not sleeping the way that nature intended you to sleep, your eyes might have bags underneath them. You might just feel tired and lethargic and irritable. Uh, let's keep going. And then I'm going to give you the plan to get through today alcohol-free. Uh, obviously, you put, you put on weight. For men, it shows up as a beer belly. Uh, for women, it can show up as um, you know shoulder fat sometimes, hips, legs. It's not great. So that's the truth. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news about alcohol, but today we're going to do a mind rewiring and I'm going to show you how to look at alcohol through a different lens. KD asks the term, or doesn't ask, just mentioning saying the term attractively packaged poison. Yeah, tell me about that, KD. What's interesting about that? Is that just, is that uh, interesting or another way to look at it? What's interesting about the term uh, KD says it resonates. It's interesting. Great. I'm so happy. Uh, how long have you been alcohol-free from Chris? 
uh, since 2010, since March 2010. So it's, I'm not sure what that is now. It must be uh, 11 and a half years, 11 or so years. Yeah. Ben says the part about erectile, not, well, I didn't actually say that word. I said sexual dysfunction, but um, I get what you're saying. Yes, for men, it can be a, a, a big issue because when you're drinking alcohol, it lowers your testosterone levels. And when your testosterone levels are, uh, are lowered, it affects or compromises your libido. So uh, men or women, if you're in a relationship with anyone, whether it be your husband or your wife, um, your intimacy improves notice, noticeably when you are consistently alcohol-free. Just a little side note there. All right, let's continue on here into the mind rewiring. Are you guys ready? All right. So you might want to grab a pen and paper for this. But the first thing that I want you to really grasp is stop trying to quit alcohol. And I'll tell you why. Because what you're doing is, is that you're telling your mind what not to do. Okay, you're telling yourself what not to do. And all of the recent, excuse me, neuroscience shows us that when you tell yourself something what not to do, you end up thinking about that very thing, which increases the likelihood that you will do or consume that very thing. So instead of saying, don't drink, I shouldn't drink, I have to quit, I'm quitting. Okay, see how in these examples here, you're saying don't drink, but now you're thinking about drinking. You're saying I shouldn't drink, but now you're thinking about drinking. I have to quit, but now you're thinking about drinking. I'm quitting, but now you're thinking about drinking. Also notice here, you've got I shouldn't, which has got a lot of shame and guilt built into it. I have to, which is very heavy. Oh, I have to, I need to. Feels very heavy, doesn't it? So instead of don't drink, I shouldn't drink, I have to quit, I'm quitting, we instead say what we will do. I easily only drink water, ice, and a piece of lime tonight. I only drink water. I easily only drink water. Henry Ford said, the man who says he can and the man who says he can't are both right. They're both correct. So if you say something is hard, like, oh, it's hard to quit drinking, well, it will be hard. If you say, oh, it's easy to only drink water, then easily only drinking water will be easy. I easily only drink lots of water as opposed to don't drink, I shouldn't drink, I have to quit. So let me, let's do a little example here and I'll need you to pay attention for about 20 seconds. I want you to close your eyes for the next 10 seconds. I'm gonna ask you to think of something. So everyone just, whether you're sitting down or standing up, just close your eyes. This will take 10 seconds only. Just close your eyes, close your eyes, close your eyes. Do not think about a pink elephant. Do not think about a pink elephant. Okay, open your eyes. Did you think about a pink elephant? Chances are you did think about a pink elephant, but I asked you not to. I requested that you did not think about a pink elephant. So why did you think about a pink elephant? Because the latest neuroscience shows us that when we tell ourselves not to do something, we end up thinking of that very thing and increase the likelihood that we'll do that very thing. So when I said, don't think about a, a pink elephant, you started thinking about a pink elephant. When you say, don't drink, I shouldn't drink, I have to quit, I'm quitting, then you're going to be thinking about drinking. So each night when you come home, or rather each night when you, each morning, I should say, when you wake up and you start saying to yourself, oh, not tonight, I'm not drinking tonight. Oh, no way. I shouldn't have had those two drinks last night. That's it. Tonight, not drinking. i got to stop this. I need to quit. I have to do this. You're actually just... You're compromising your efforts. You're sabotaging yourself because you've focused on what you are trying not to do as opposed to telling yourself what you will do. Does that make sense? 
Now, smokers get this wrong all the time. People who want to quit smoking. Quit. I must quit. I'm going to quit. Quit smoking. But, of course, what are you thinking about when you say that you're going to quit smoking? You're thinking about smoking. And so then a packet of cigarettes turn up and you're like, all right, I'm going to smoke. But what's a way that we could do a flip that's a word that I made up, a flip on quitting smoking that doesn't involve the word smoking? How about this? I easily only breathe in fresh air. The only air, the only thing I put in my lungs is fresh air. I only ever allow fresh air into my lungs. I easily only breathe in fresh air. See how that's so different to, I've got to quit smoking, I need to quit. I'm quitting. See how that's different? And this is not just some tricky little mind, some tricky little word thing, although our language is vitally important. This is backed in neuroscience. They've done studies that show people who are trying to quit alcohol keep drinking alcohol for the most part. People who just don't even focus on alcohol and instead they focus on drinking only healthy drinks remain alcohol-free and have a much healthier life. Who here wants to put in, well, actually, let's do a little bit of engaging here. Just type in what is the sentence that you will now say as it relates to drinking something tonight? What will you do tonight? Tell me what you will do. Now, be clear. Don't tell me what you won't do. Tell me what you will do. So go ahead and type that in for me. Just put that into the, uh, the panelists and attendees section there. You can just click there on comment or on chat and you can just type in beautiful i will drink water fantastic i love that thank you for sharing that who else i will drink water kyle says i will enjoy soda water with cranberry juice i love that so kyle says i will enjoy soda water with cranberry juice pete says chilled water with cucumber geez i'm liking this these all sound pretty good uh, Christina says, looking forward to ice water with lemon and a walk versus a half bottle of wine. Okay, so even better, Christina, great job. Even better is don't even say the words half bottle of wine. You don't even have to say that. You just say looking forward to ice water with lemon and a walk. See how that's telling yourself what you will do as opposed to what you will not KD says, I will easily enjoy sparkling water with lime. Fantastic. I love this. Great work. You guys are getting it. Let's continue. Second thing, and this will be the, the, the second of three things that we talk about today. Um, design your environment. So we want to remove the visual cues of alcohol and we want to replace them with the visual cues of health and vitality. Okay. We want to design our environment. So James Clear, who's a friend of mine, wrote the New York Times bestselling book, Atomic Habits. In fact, I interviewed him and recorded the interview about habits um, and our Project 90 members get those, um, get that video and that interview as part of their membership. But he says, James Clear in his book, remove the steps between you and your good behaviours and increase the steps between you and your bad behaviours. So what does that mean? And what does it mean when we're talking about removing visual cues of alcohol and replacing them with visual cues of health and vitality? Well, chances are, if you're like most people who drink, you've got wine glasses, bottle openers, corkscrews, bottles of wine, six packs of beer somewhere in your home, whether it's in your fridge, your cupboard or your pantry. That's a visual cue. And every time you see those visual cues, that is cueing you up to drink a wine or a beer or a scotch or whatever. A lot of people have liquor cabinets. See how the liquor cabinet is beautifully presented. It's got the, the vodka and it's got the rum. And, and each day you walk past that liquor cabinet, that is a visual cue. It's, it's essentially saying to you, drink me. Come forth, dear sir or dear ma'am, and drink me. What are some visual cues of alcohol that you have in your home? Uh, I see Blake says, um, 
For me, it's about doing something else, spending extra time with kids, watch a show, not focus just on what I'll consume. Great, fantastic. KD says glassware. So you have uh, glassware. What kind of glassware, KD? Wine glasses, beer glasses. What have you got? Someone else here has got wine decanters. Yes. Bottle openers. Yes. Tina says corkscrews. Yes. Got it. Okay, thank you. Pete says everything. What happens if your wife enjoys wine? Pete, great question. We'll get to that. We're going to be talking about that tomorrow, actually, on day two, where we'll be talking about how to socialize without alcohol and how to diffuse or, or um, defend against the smiling assassins. Sounds like your wife is a smiling assassin in this instance. Thanks for the question, Pete. Tune in tomorrow. We'll get to that. Now, what do you replace these wine glasses, corkscrews, liquor cabinets, wine? What do we replace it with? Type in some suggestions there and then I'm going to show you. So what are some, some, some visual cues of health and vitality that we could put around our home that every time we just walk past it, we go, oh, healthy or subconsciously. Maybe we don't even notice it, but we're thinking about ourselves as being healthy and vibrant and energetic, someone who's alcohol-free and loving it. Variety of sparkling waters with fresh herbs to add, like thyme and basil. That sounds delicious. So sparkling water is fantastic. So I have a sparkling water here. Let me, this might be an opportune time for me to show you. In the fridge, there's no alcohol, there's no beer, there's no wine. I have a sparkling water. This is a company called Spindrift. It's actually really, really nice. Real squeezed fruit. It's natural. It's got three calories in it. Okay, I'll just show you on the back here. And the ingredients are simply uh, carbonated water and lemon juice. That's all it is, carbonated water and lemon juice. Juice. There's a company called Zevia. I love this. This has got to be my most favorite drink of all time. Ginger root beer. I don't know if anyone likes ginger beer or root beer. This is amazing. Zevia is a tremendous company that has zero, ca zero calorie soda, perfectly healthy for you. And let's have a look at the ingredients here carbonated water, stevia leaf extract, natural flavors, and citric acid. So these sparkling waters are nice and colorful. These are attractively packaged waters, essentially. But comparing it, you know, attractively packaged poison, these are James approved. And zevia has got lots of great flavors as well. It's got orange and lemon and a few other things. Katie says, I drink uh, their ginger ale mixed with seltzer. Great. So ginger ale of itself is actually full of sugar and we don't want to um, just substitute one poison for another. But if you if you mean, if, if, if by you saying there, oh, you're saying the Zevia ginger beer, yeah, great, fantastic, because they've removed all the sugar from it. It's just some natural flavour. So here's what I do in my home when I am replacing those alcohol cues with visual with uh, visual cues. I like to put glass mason jars around my home. And these glass mason jars uh, make me always think about drinking water. Okay, so instead of having wine bottles and wine glasses, I have glass mason jars. And I fill up my glass mason jars with filtered water and I drink lots and lots of water throughout the day. Plus I drink my Zevia or my sparkling water. Flowers. Men as well, even if you're a man and you're a testosterone-fueled alpha male man, buy yourself a bouquet of flowers. Buy a bouquet of flowers and put them on your living room table. Put them on your kitchen table. If you have a wife or a partner, buy her some flowers and take care of those flowers because the flowers become a representation, a visual representation of health and vitality. And I want to challenge you to really take care of these flowers when you buy them. Put them in a vase with water. Replace the water each day. Take care of them. Make sure they get plenty of sunlight, not too, too much sunlight. Replace the water. Just by replacing the water and maybe cutting the stems a little bit each day, you can prolong the life of these flowers. And every day you come home from work or you walk in the door once you've been out and you see those flowers, it will get you feeling and thinking like you are healthy or at least healthier than what you've been. The colours and the scent 
becomes a representation for your own body. So I want you to focus on treating those flowers with the utmost respect and love and care, and that becomes a metaphor for your own body, for your own life. Treat your own body with love and respect and care. Drink lots of water. Go outside and face the sun. Care, nurture for those flowers. They become a representation for you caring and nurturing for yourself. Again, we're trying to design or manipulate our environment if we go back to what James Clear told us in Atomic Habits, remove the steps between you and your good behaviors. We want a nice clean path to good behaviors and the clear path is visual representation of health and vitality, which is glass mason jars, a bouquet of flowers, a fridge full of um, zero calorie uh, sparkling water. This is for the ladies. These men look quite handsome with their bouquet of flowers. I remember when I bought my bouquet of flowers for the first time. I was in Venice Beach, California. I went to the Friday morning markets there um, about two blocks back from the um, famous Venice Beach uh, boardwalk. And I bought a bouquet of flowers and I was um, my home at the time was walking distance and I was walking back to my home with this bouquet of flowers and all the cars were driving by because it was about 8.39 in the morning on a Friday, so there was a lot of traffic. And I kept thinking, well, all the people in the cars must be thinking that either I've made a mistake uh, with, a, with a romantic partner, with my partner, or, or I'm about to. <laughs> that was the story I created in my head. But in actual fact, all I was doing was buying a bouquet of flowers to stick on my living room table to remind me to be healthy and vibrant and to challenge myself to take care of those flowers as, I, as a symbol for taking care of myself. In fact, I recall a couple of days later, I was in the Air One supermarket in Venice Beach and I was lining up and there were a few people ahead of me. And the, the way they design the supermarket is that when you're waiting in line to go to the cash register, they have candy and chocolates, and packets of chips and all the things you know you shouldn't eat but they're all just staring at you as you're waiting in line. They do it deliberately because they want you to, you know, to, to make these impulse buys. And I remember at the time I was like, oh, I really want to buy one of those chocolates. But then straight away the flowers came into my mind and I was like, oh, I am the flowers. I only put in good food and good liquids into my body. I take care of myself. I nurture myself. And so I just walked up to the cash register and I bought the groceries that I had bought and I did not buy the chocolate bar and I went back to my Venice Beach home and that was proof enough for me that these visual cues work. If you manipulate your environment, healthy drinks, sparkling water, um, pitchers of, of, of water, Evian, um, Perrier, buy a bouquet of flowers, nice colourful fruit like lime and lemon and um, all of those things and you remove the visual cues of the wine glass and the beer and the trash and all that kind of stuff, you will start to step into this persona of a healthier person. All right, let's have a look. We've got some uh, questions here. Who has got some questions? Type in the questions down below. Um what is your favorite water? So I like Perrier um, or, um, yeah, Perrier water is good. Um, not Pellegrino because Pellegrino has a lot of sugar in it. A lot of people get those two mixed up. They think, oh, Pellegrino is really healthy. But it's actually got a lot of sugar in it. I would invite you to look in the back of, of any drinks and zero to, to three calories is good. This has got three calories. But basically what you really want is just to check that the water it's just water and some lemon juice or, if it's Zevia, some uh, water and natural flavors, okay? Uh, all right, so today your goal is we're going to wrap up today. We'll be back again tomorrow. Remember, there is a Facebook group. If you're not in the Facebook group, I invite you to join. Melanie, my executive assistant, is going to drop in the chat right now the link to that Facebook group. In there, you will be able to see the replay of this particular presentation for day one. I'll be uploading it uh, there in about half an hour or so, so you can go and review uh, if needs be. I invite you to go into the Facebook group and post a photo of you being alcohol-free tonight. 
take a photo of you with sparkling water, take a photo with you with a bouquet of flowers, take a photo of the flowers, take a photo of the drink, tell us your favorite um, alcohol-free drink. Go ahead and post in that community if you feel comfortable to be in the Facebook group. Um, I would love to, to hear from you and see from you. I will comment back and give you a little shout out. Uh, what felt valuable for you about today's call? Christina says, emphasize what is positive versus negative. Yes. Fantastic, Christina. Thank you for sharing that. John says the term alcohol, sorry, attractively packaged poison. Thank you, John. Uh, if you have any other questions, go ahead. Uh, focusing, James says, focusing on what I'm going to do, not what I'm not going to do. Yes. So what are you going to do tonight? You're going to be drinking. You're going to be easily only drinking sparkling water. That's what you're going to do. Uh, Blake said what was valuable for him was when I described myself as being average. Stop being average. Yeah, like people describing yourself as being average, stop being average. Be outstanding. Be a high performer. This is who I coach. I have uh, entrepreneurs, parents, husbands, wives, top professionals. When you are drinking, you are holding yourself back. And we're going to do a mathematical equation on um, Thursday. We're going to do a calculator, a calculation as to how much your drinking is actually costing you, and it's frightening. It's not just the three or $4,000 that you spend each year on alcohol. It's what you're not generating for yourself because of your drinking habits. So make sure you tune into that. Some of you probably won't want to because you won't, you won't want the truth. Uh, Kyle says, I think all of these points are valuable. The one I most appreciated is the clarity of mind that one loses without even noticing while drinking. Yes, Kyle. Thank you. Mark says, should have bought myself flowers on Sunday along with my mother. Yes. Well, Mark, great news. You get to go and buy yourself a bouquet of flowers now. If you're an alpha male, if you consider yourself an alpha male testosterone fueled guys guy, it might feel a little awkward to go and buy a bouquet of flowers with the intention of it being for you. I know it felt awkward for me when I first did it, but it works. I promise you it works. Uh, okay, so that is it for today. Thank you so much for attending. Um, if any of you would like to uh, work with me on a more um, uh, professional basis, I'll be talking a little bit more about that um, as we go along here towards the end. But you can also, you can always, I should say, uh, read up a little bit more about um, Project 90 and the folks that I help in um, over here on this page, alcoholfreelifestyle.com apply. And there you can see a lot of these people here, these folks um, down below uh, whose lives have been completely transformed because they went alcohol free. You can just go to alcoholfreelifestyle com forward slash apply and you can read up there and see some pretty um, amazing success stories um, Mark you're going to buy yourself some flowers <laughs> which is amazing uh, thank you Blake, James, Christina, Kyle Nelson, Pete, Ben Tina, John and all of you others who are here on the call uh, I will see you guys same time tomorrow, go ahead and post in the, 30, in the, uh, in the 5 day alcohol challenge Facebook group all right. Thanks, guys. I will see you tomorrow. Have a great day one alcohol-free, and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for listening to the Alcohol-Free Lifestyle Podcast. I want to load you up with some free stuff right now. So if you want to go to jameswanick.com slash guide, I will send you my Quit Alcohol Guide, which has helped six-figure entrepreneurs and top professionals reduce or quit drinking. You can also text the word quit guide to the number 44222 if you're in the US, of course. It doesn't really work anywhere outside of the US. But if you're in the US on your mobile phone and you'd like that guide, text the word quit guide to the number 44222 or you can go to jameswanick.com slash guide. If you'd like to schedule a free 15-minute call with one of my top coaches, just an exploratory call to see if or how we can help you, then you can go to jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word PROJECT90 to the number 44222 if you're listening in the US on a mobile phone. That's jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word PROJECT90, that's one word, PROJECT90, to the number 44222. 
Feel free to send me a direct message over on my Instagram account, which is at James Swanick. You can also watch video episodes of this podcast and a series of other educational videos on my YouTube channel, which is James Swanick One, or you can direct message me on Facebook at James Swanick Official. And finally, a request. Would you please now write a short review of the podcast inside of the Apple Podcast app on your phone or on iTunes on your desktop? Computer. Would you please give the show five stars and write a quick one or two sentence review? This will help the show get in front of even more listeners, potentially transforming someone's life. You can rate and review the show inside of your Apple Podcast app on your phone or over on iTunes on your desktop. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you next time. <laughs>